Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here today to talk Vanderpump Rules, honey, reunion part three. We're wrapping this shit up. Yeah. We're also going to be talking about The Valley. This is also beginning to wrap up. And so some of these major storylines are coming to an end. Yeah. And we want to talk about it. Yeah. Now, before we get into it, we do want to tell you to please, how'd you have it, how'd you get? This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have I said I was pointing at me. Oh, I thought you were pointing at me. <laughs> we have dumb opinions. And so if you're so funny up, you might want to find yourself another dumpster. But if you're down and you're ready to talk about these wee ho kids, mm. welcome to the stumpster. Yeah, and if you are cool and if you are down to party with us, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash reality TV Cringe. We're covering MILF Manor 2 up on there. We're recapping uh, Couples Therapy with Dr. Orna that's coming out and much more. Yes, we have so much content there. So, so if you're much. ever bored and you want to go through the archives, that is the place to be. Yeah. And finally, if you are watching on YouTube, first and foremost, thank you very much. You look beautiful today. Yeah. Please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because everything you do helps us in the algorithm and that helps us to grow the community so thank you in advance thank you okay let's start with Vanderpump Rules now before we even get into it honey you know I watched that reunion right and I was so upset I was apoplectic you were texting I was me. having a hard time yeah. I was upset yep and I didn't think that I could exist in a world where I could dislike Lala Kent any more than I did last week but mm. guess what Oh, girl. As it turns out, I absolutely can. She is an odious person. She is yep. a hypocrite of the highest order, and I never want to see her again. And I hope that Bravo and the production house feels the same way and puts that bitch on pause. Because I think she's so full of herself. Yeah. I think she has lost the plot. I really do think she thinks she's the most important person in any room at any time. Yep. And somebody needs to give her some humble pie. Like, fuck off. Lala Kent. Oh my God, fire her already. She's so annoying. This whole episode of the reunion, I was texting you and I'm like, I'm so fucking confused what Lala is going off on right now. Like she thinks she's got a coherent argument against Ariana and all of this shit that she's coming out bitching to everybody calling everybody fake when she's the fakest fucking one there. I'm like, I can't with you. I was pissed. I was pissed too. And it's like in the same argument that she's making on any given subject, she contradicts herself. All the time. Like, she's so concerned about everyone being authentic, but then at the end of the reunion backstage, she's like, she doesn't fucking like Katie. She doesn't like Ariana. So you're a fake-ass bitch then. Yes. How's that authentic? It doesn't make any fucking sense to me. You're so pissed off that Ariana walked out of the season finale, and then here you are trying to walk out of the finale of the reunion. Do you not see this like everybody else does, Lala? It's so fucking hypocritical. And like I was telling you earlier today, like, I don't understand why she's getting mad and saying that Ariana's fake for walking off on the season finale and taking her time and being a human being and being like, I don't want to be a part of this toxic ass shit. Peace out. I don't care about my job. She's bitching about that and comparing it to, I think, like season nine mm -hmm. or season 10 or whatever, the reunion where she allegedly didn't want to be there because right. of Randall or whatever. I'm like, well, you could have been authentic back then and walked off yourself, mm -hmm. but you didn't. You were fake and you produced a storyline for everybody because you think that that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And now you're getting mad at everybody else for being authentic. Like, fuck you. And furthermore, this was after years upon years upon years of secrets yes. and lies and hiding information and NDAs from Randall Emmett. Like, who the, who the fuck do you think you are? Right. Like, you got caught with your pants down trying to produce a show yep. whereas Ariana was being authentic mm -hmm. like the most realistic thing that she could have done in that moment is the thing that she did that's being real but yep. Lala you wanted her to stay sit down have her moment with Tom hopefully production would get her to cry or allow him to do his visine tears and cry and have the final 
culminating moment. Like you're just trying to produce TV. Ariana's trying to be a real bitch. Yep. And that is the difference. And the fact that you can't see it, maybe that owes to your youth. Although I think you're 31 or something. Like, yeah. roll the fuck up already. Seriously. Like you think you're so enlightened. You think you're so personally developed. You think you've done all this work, but you are a vile, venomous, angry woman and I think it's really rich that you spend so much time calling Katie miserable when the person who is miserable in this group and on the stage is you you are a fucking miserable mean woman and I think you should do something about that oh for sure go to fucking therapy oh wait I forgot you said that doesn't work for you yeah I don't need need therapy just be sober then I guess yeah I guess your miserable life and we were talking about that as well because she's so confused about how Ariana is getting this reaction from the audience and everyone has sympathy and compassion for Ariana. But yet when it happened to her, to Lala, we weren't as compassionate. Well, that's because Ariana earned that compassion by being a person of integrity. Whereas you, as I just said, spent season upon season upon season being a bitch and also lying to everybody and then gaslighting us afterwards. And so when you had your inevitable downfall because you hooked yourself up with a married man, right? When you had your inevitable downfall, we knew it was coming. Yeah. And we're not going to feel bad for you because you walked right into that and you celebrated it the whole time. So you didn't earn that good favor from the audience, whereas Ariana did. So cry harder. Seriously. Or as Katie says, choke. Choke. <laughs> I don't care. Well, and that's the other thing too. She's still lying about Randall Emmett, acting like she was in love with him. She was going to spend the rest of his or her life with him. And I'm like, Bitch, no, you weren't. He was buying you fucking private jets or le- Range Rovers or whatever the fuck. He was paying your way. Mm-hmm. That's why you were sucking his dick the whole entire time. And then when he leaves your ass for some other chippy who's dumb and wants to get her fame, you get all pissed off and bitter and you're like, I may be a single mom. Right. Fuck all of you. I'm more enlightened because I have kids. No, you're not. You're actually just I'm as fucked up as everybody else. life. Okay. And a billion women have done it before you bitch and a billion women as long as we don't blow up the planet will do it after you mm-hmm. women been doing that since the dawn of time you're not special that doesn't make you enlightened that doesn't no, give you an additional higher vantage point on the world she's acting like janet from the valley They're, they do have that in common yes it's just that janet probably hides her vile venomous nature well, she tries to. a bit better than yeah. lala does because lala pretends she's a fucking thug yes so she puts that right in your face but she just looks like an absolute fool and so after watching this reunion i had to go up onto socials now yes girl and i had to look and see what everybody was saying in the and comment section that's right so i just pulled a few comments i thought we could all just go over them and glory over them together if yes. that's okay yes this first comment was on instagram it was from somebody named bika726 she says Lala is clearly projecting her frustration from how she was treated at the season nine reunion and dumping it all on Ariana. I get that her situation is different than Ariana's, but she doesn't get to decide that because hers involves a child that Ariana's pain is minimal. She doesn't get to invalidate other people's feelings. And also, no offense, she was questioned about her relationship in season nine reunion because of how hella secretive she was about Randall for seasons and she wasn't forced to film with him god i'm so over her and she's so boring she doesn't Mm. even bring storylines to the table she was yelling at ariana to carry the show so she can collect her paycheck get the fuck out of here oh that is so base so good so So good oh my god bika i agree 100 (laughs) percent. 100 percent. okay a couple of other yeah comments is that okay because yeah so great karina delana says the only problem lala is having is envy Mm -mm. And sweetheart, that's a call coming from inside the house. Yes, bitch. Only you can fix that. Nobody else can fix that for you. Another person said, Jessica.xci, I really wish Lala would stop saying she loves Ariana because she doesn't. She hasn't been her friend in years. And Sheena needs to stop being a people pleaser. Like, be there for yourself and that's it. I love how Sheena goes straight to Lala during the break and not Ariana. LMAO, Ariana doesn't need any of these peasants. She's the breadwinner, baby. And they're upset because she calls the shots. Oh, that's so true. Ain't that the truth? Going back to what Nick Vial said, like Lala and Sheena were really 
like working, vying for the number one girl in the group this season. Mm -hmm. And Ariana wasn't working at all, honey. She was just showing up, doing what she had to do, being authentic. And she's the number one girl in the group. And you girls are so bitter about it. It's so funny to me because it's like Ariana really didn't have to do anything but be herself and just like be her authentic shit. Like even during this season, people are trying to dog on Ariana for her anger and being so vengeful and so mad and hurt. But it's like, She's a real person going through a real breakup of nine years with Mm -hmm. a guy that she thought she was going to spend her life with. Like, these are authentic reactions that people have. We just like to forget that we can be that angry or forget that we can be that venomous when we're hurting. But like, that's just why everybody's going for Ariana because everybody's Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you're a real person. Yeah. You have integrity. You, I can relate to you as a person. Mm-hmm. I can't relate to Lala fucking Kent. Mm-mm. I can't relate to Sheena Shea with apples. Nobody cares. <laughs> I can't. Oh, one final comment, if that's okay, from yeah. GIBR42. Ariana has always treated everyone with kindness, and most people extended her grace and kindness back when this went down. Mm. Lauren from Utah has behaved like a rancid swamp witch in the past, (laughs) and she got back what she put out. Speaking Uh. directly to my point that Ariana earned this compassion. Ariana has conducted herself in such a way that people very easily felt bad for her and wanted her to win. But Lauren from Utah, Lala Kent, you never did that. And you always thought you were better than everyone else. And it's your voice that is the most important one in the room. And because you're so fucking unspeakably insufferable, this is what happens. Yep. This is what happens. It's really embarrassing. That's why there are so many people celebrating your downfall. Yep. And Lala, for as much as she's going off on everybody else living in the comments section on the fucking Vanderpump Rules reunion... She's got her comments limited on Instagram. Of course, just like Janet. She's totally off the internet. And then she comes out with a podcast episode where she has like a little snippet where she's like kind of sort of not really acknowledging her behavior on the reunion. She's saying like, oh, I was just hurt because I was seeing a bunch of comments people made about my parenting and my child and I got really triggered. And so that's why I was on the attack. That's why I was insulting. That's why I was so vicious. And I know I can be like that, but that's my feelings. That's my real emotion. Mm. I'm allowed to feel that. I'm like, okay, so it's not taking real accountability. Mm -hmm. But then you're calling everybody out for a living in the comment section, right. but you're doing the exact same fucking thing. Right. Hypocrite. But you want to pl- outplay yeah, this? Yeah, let's play a little bit of what she said on her podcast because I'd like to respond to it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, as you guys know, Vanderpump Rules season 11 has officially wrapped. It is bittersweet. Filming this season was bittersweet. Reliving it was, in my opinion, one of the most difficult things or difficult seasons that I've, ever had I will say it's more difficult than filming the season uh that my dad had passed away um and I stopped talking about this season because I have to be honest I was seeing things on socials um just one sec um That made me extremely angry. And it started making me resent an audience that I have loved and adored for many years. And it wasn't because of you guys talking about, um, I don't want to say you guys, but some of you. It wasn't about some of you talking about the season. That part I love. It was about the comments that were talking about me as a parent. I don't show Ocean on the show. I'm very protective of my... I just knew she was going to use her reaction to this backlash. Like I knew she was going to use her child as a shield yep. for that. Cause that's really all that she has. Yeah. And like, it is her 
identity. Obviously, her her identity is is pretty much twofold on the show. Like she's sober, and she's creating life. Yeah. She's a mother. Those two things are something she really wants us to know, and she's really invested in those aspects of her life. Um, and she's upset that people are attacking her parenting because of her behavior. Yeah. But see, what she doesn't understand is that people are judging her, not on her parenting, but on her behavior. And if your behavior is so bad and so discompassionate and so venomous to all of these people and has been historically through all of these seasons that you have been on, like that's all people can go on. They're going to attach that to your identity. And what you're putting out there is your sobriety and your parenting. So they're going to attach that. That's the natural result of your behavior. And see what you're not doing though, and I know you listened to the whole thing, but I yeah. couldn't even stand to do it. What you're not doing here is addressing the behavior. Nope. The shit that you actually did. How you threw an actual friend, somebody who showed up for you under the bus and the things that you did behind the scene and how you tried to produce all of these scenes and probably ruined the show as a result of that. Oh, like, totally. You're not talking about any of that. You're talking about being a mom and being upset that people are attacking your parenting. And to that, I want to say that I am in the comment section. I subscribe to and follow a lot of people who follow Vanderpump Rules and yep. I'm always listening to their opinions and commentary. And I'm looking at the comments. I personally have never seen, not even once, somebody coming for her parenting. But I know you said that you have. I've seen a few. But I really haven't. Like, it's always been about Randall. Right. It's always been about your hypocrisy. It's always been about your black accent it's always been about your big fucking ego that's what people talk about that i have seen yeah so why can't you talk about that stuff right why can't you talk honestly and authentically about the things that people actually have an issue with because you can't yeah because it's indefensible so let's use my baking my baby in my belly as your ultimate defense and your get out of jail free card it's weak super weak and even then i'm like even if you are seeing all of these comments questioning your parenting and your child and all of this crap how is that ariana's problem right how does that have anything to do with the vitriol that you spewed about ariana all fucking season and how you're actually a terrible <clears throat> fucking person and a terrible friend like this entire time you've been talking shit about ariana behind her back she didn't even watch the season yet she didn't even see the last 15 minutes of the season finale where you and sheena were talking mad shit about her as she left the weird black tie party mm -hmm. at kyle chan's event so it's just like it's so frustrating to me like don't come here and do damage control and say oh you just reacted from some comments that you saw online when it's not fucking about that just be real you were upset that Ariana got all of this screen mm -hmm. time and that you didn't and that you were irrelevant with your water sommelier and your baby sperm party. Like mm -hmm. nobody fucking cares. And that's such a good point. Like what did you actually in a substantive way, like what did you bring to the show? Like Nothing. how did you make it interesting other than you just being a puppet for production? Like what did you bring of your own life? Somebody was saying, I think it was on Reddit, like we never really go inside of her apartment. Right. We never really see her other relationships and we never see her running her business. We never, we don't know anything about you except for what your opinion is about everybody else's lives. Like what do you bring to the show? Because you have a lot of fire and a lot of smoke for Ariana saying she doesn't bring anything to the table. But like what about you yeah there's really nothing i'm not interested in lala kent i'm not interested in sheena shay oh god uh, can we get to that yes sheena's face girl when they are playing the last five minutes of the season finale like i think she felt and probably lala did as well that she got away with that and that they weren't going to show it because it broke the fourth wall or whatever uh -huh. and so to see her like wide eyes as she's looking over to ariana watching sheena agree with Lala who is calling Ariana Beyonce and somebody who thinks she's God because she got cheated on I was just like Sheena like this is your opportunity actually mm -hmm. if you want to tell Ariana how you really feel and if you want to stand on business and tell people how you feel about everything like this is your opportunity now but what does Sheena do she immediately her anxious attachment style she like starts to vacillate. She's like, well, yes, I mean, I was frustrated. And I, I do understand Lala's point. But like at the same time, I understand. Like take a position. Yep. Take a position and stand in it. Yes. How are you almost 40 years old, honestly, 
40 years old and unable to straighten your spine and say what you want. And and that's actually very judgmental of me because it can take a lifetime for people, especially people who have been disempowered in childhood. It can take a lifetime to learn how to find your voice. Yeah. But like, do the fucking work. Right. Do the fucking work to learn how to assert yourself and ask for what you need and tell people what you want. Like, she's so weak. So She's weak. such a fucking fence sitter all the time, just trying to see where the wind is blowing in order to pick her position. I have no respect for that. There's no strength in that. It's embarrassing how you look, Sheena. No, seriously. And I mean, like, we can have a conversation about how it's a hard thing to do to learn how to speak up for yourself and stuff. Like, I get that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's such an unlikable and undesirable trait in somebody when you go back and forth and you have to be on both fucking sides of everything it's just like tom schwartz how he's like Mm -hmm. always going back and forth with all the people being like the aw shucks i'm a good guy i've got good intentions meanwhile you're knowing that tom sandoval's fucking raquel and you're allowing it at your apartment but still being friends with ariana it's like the same thing they're all like that except for katie and ariana it seems and james and james Mm -hmm. james called out sandoval and then really didn't say anything else during the rest of the reunion he did not which i was kind of bummed about i'm like i want more of that but maybe he's over it too maybe Mm -hmm. he's like ariana and he's like fuck this i'm just gonna go dj in las vegas yeah he's got a residency (laughs) in las vegas but yeah i was just like sheena stand for something are you gonna fall for anything sheena like come on now i believe you can do it but after so many seasons of her just being such a pick me like she just went out the way she came in i know week af i couldn't believe embarrassed for her after that scene was revealed to everybody and ariana starts crying about it and she leans over to hug katie and they take a break like sheena goes over to lala Mm -hmm. to comfort her i'm like that's absolutely wild and even ariana like she held herself so well during this whole reunion in my opinion i thought she was very like graceful well put she had great answers to everything but she straight up says like i understand your frustration lala but like i don't get the insults right that was totally unnecessary Mm -hmm. and it was and lala has nothing to fucking say right she's got this big ass mouth that has nothing to say right when ariana says that or about the paycheck comment. Oh, yes, yes. That was really good. And I'm kind of forgetting where the context of the paycheck comment came from. But like, it just became obvious to Ariana, who again, hadn't watched the season like all of us have. Mm-hmm. But like, it became obvious to Ariana that what Lala's chief complaint is, is that she was showing up to film TV. Ariana was not. And Ariana wasn't giving the scenes that at least Lala felt like she should have to make good TV. And Lala keeps talking about her children. Lala keeps talking about needing to provide for her children and coming for her business. And so Ariana has sussed out like the rest of us have that Lala is frankly desperate. She's desperate for Vanderpump Rules. Without Vanderpump Rules, what else does she have? We talked about this last week. She's got like a podcast, but I ain't going to listen to it. Are no. you? She's got her Amazon Lives where she gets an affiliate commission, I guess. But like, I don't buy any of that shit. Do mm-hmm. you? And are you telling me if VPR goes off the air, if we never go back to Sir, anybody's going to be checking for Lala for any reason whatsoever? Like, I can't see it. No. And she knows it. Yep. And she really came down on the wrong side of history if she had just been real. And if she had been a girl's girl, like literally, if she had just stuck by Ariana, who, by the way, was hugely betrayed. Yeah. And in a way, some could argue was worse than the way Lala was betrayed. And it was a blind side for Ariana. Lala should have been able to see Randall Emmett and the scum that he was well in advance. And she was scum too because she cheated on him too. Right. Don't get me started. But like, Be there for her. Be an actual friend. Show us you're a human being. All you show is that you are a bitch. Yep, 100%. And I liked how Ariana did acknowledge that in the reunion. She's like, I felt like I was being pushed to be over this whole betrayal way quicker than I needed to be. Like, I was really trying to process it. I was trying to feel all the way through it because they questioned her about her anger at james and Allie's pool party where brock was like yeah that was a little strong that female rage shut the fuck up get the fuck off my tv honestly brock. she's allowed Here's to some be female rage mad. for you seriously i just i couldn't it was just so ridiculous how the producers still at the final reunion are trying to push this sandoval redemption arc and you had texted me earlier today about how fucked up it was that the producers even held back that footage mm-hmm. that it felt like it was personal to Mm -hmm. ariana that they showed it to her Mm -hmm. at the reunion to make her fucking cry and she talks about this on katie's podcast yes 
she actually has a clip. I posted it on our IG story where she's saying like it felt like they were just doing it just to blindside me. And OK, congrats. To you got me mean. to cry. Mm -hmm. And they did. I think yeah, so. Because she didn't give them the scene that they really wanted in the season finale. She didn't give them the sit down with Tom Sandoval. And she's like they wanted that Miami scene as they had with Tom Sandoval and Kristen where he's mm. crying and he's making amends so that he can go into the next season and do the same old shit again. Like that is what they wanted for Ariana and for Tom. But like she didn't want to give that to him. And plus that wouldn't have been real or authentic. So nope. she didn't do it. And I do think it was personal. And I actually had that opinion before I then went up on socials and started to see what everybody else was thinking. And that's when I saw many other people saying like, why did production need to do that? Why? Just to make unnecessary. her feel bad to see how many people in this group are talking about her. Now to that end, Lala, for as much as I don't like her, she had some points in there that I think did have merit. For example, when she's talking about how everybody else is actually saying all kinds of mad shit about Ariana, right? Mm -hmm. Especially how Ariana is not showing up for Sheena and this and that. Like everybody talks about how annoying it is that Ariana doesn't show up to shit, but she's the only one who's actually saying it. So mm. where are you guys moment to moment? Why aren't you guys filming this stuff? I thought that was... A good point like yeah. I think I could see a world where she would be frustrated about it but because she's targeting Ariana though like as you said that's not Ariana's fault no that everybody else have they haven't spoken up and said what whatever they were saying behind closed doors it's not Ariana's fault so why are you taking it out on her I don't know it's so weird I mean I think she tried to do that with Katie when she was calling out Katie like last reunion or whatever but like Again, we had talked about it. Katie was going to a friend and venting her frustrations about another friend in private that she didn't want to bring up to this friend who's going through hell right now. And then Lala has to just air out everybody's dirty laundry thinking she's doing something. Mm -hmm. Like she really thought she was yep. doing something in this reunion. I'm like, girl, you dug yourself such a deep grave. Like mm -hmm. nobody wants you on any show ever again. Mm -hmm. Everybody fucking hates you. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate because I think Lala has power in terms of like her voice like she could be what she calls a truth teller she could be honest if she actually was honest but she's not she's well, just as fake as everybody else i she has the raw materials yeah to be a very powerful person if she actually got right with herself and developed a faculty for self-reflection yeah. and being honest with herself in her own like critique of herself. Like she doesn't have the ability to do that yet. And you know what, to be frank, like that can take time. It can take age to be able to develop that kind of faculty. But unfortunately you are on the world stage and you got a big fucking mouth. Yeah. You got a big fucking mouth and this is going to follow you everywhere. Oh yeah. So develop like look for the resources to develop yourself and the way that you think and the way that you speak like it's not that some of the things aren't true just as i said it's the way that you relay them and it's how you target people yep. and it's how you presume presume to come across as so much better than other people and for every subject that was brought up in all three parts of this reunion, she had something to say about it. I know. Like sometimes just shut up. Yeah. Sometimes less wor words is actually better for you, makes you look better if you can control yourself. Then I dare say, and I'm not a doctor out here, but like something's wrong up here, honey. Oh, I don't totally. know if you've got some kind of a personality disorder. Maybe you've got narcissistic personality disorder. Maybe you've got the bipolar or the borderline personality, but you snap, you yell, you demean, you are mean. And these aren't qualities that are going to get you far in life. And yeah, you're beautiful. So you got that going for That's you. And I'm going to give you, but like that beauty fades. Yep. Beauty fades. Yep. What about inner beauty? And I think she has it. Like, honestly, I think she's probably a great mom. I think she really wants to be a great mom. Yeah. I think there are beautiful parts of Lala, but she just can't help herself. No. And she even talked about this on her podcast. Like I sent you that clip. It was like a nine minute clip. Yeah. So hard to listen to her talk. It's so annoying. But in that clip, she was talking about her anger and how she can just attack people and be very venomous, but then does nothing to change it. It's like, okay, you know this about yourself. Like, and I've talked about this on the pod. I can be like that. I can mm -hmm. be somebody, if I'm fucking mad, I can say some fucked up 
shit. But I'm aware of it because I know if I do that, I'm going to hurt and damage and ruin all of the relationships that I have with everybody fucking else. Because I can't control my anger because I'm such a child that I got to fucking say some mean shit to somebody because I'm hurting. No, grow the fuck up, Lala. That's my opinion on it. I'm like, I can't with you. You were 30 something. You need to get your shit together. I'm sorry that your casting couch dick didn't work out for you. And now you have to find some other ways to provide for yourself and get a real job like everybody else. I'm sorry. That sucks. But that's life. Mm -hmm. And she just can't accept that. No. And and she feels entitled to more than what she actually earns. Yes. Which is also a part of the problem. And you know, honey, if you had known me in my 20s, you would not recognize me. No, and I'm yeah. not talking about physically. I'm talking about as an, an emotional person who's showing up in the world. For sure. I was so out of control. Now, I come from a childhood of like severe emotional and physical abuse. And so I'm not going to get into that, but like severe yeah. abuse. And so I went into my first marriage at 18 years old, just completely substituting. Like, okay, I'm going into a new situation, but like, what about all this fucked up energy I'm used to? Let me create that for myself in this in this new relationship. I had a rage disorder. I didn't know how to control my mouth. I was very smart, very articulate, and I could go straight to the white meat. I could hurt somebody mm. deep. I mean, the shit that I have said to people, to people that I have purported to love and that I did love, like that, that they still carry with them because I didn't know how to just shut Shut my mouth and like think about how much I love them instead because I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to be a people. Right. I didn't know how to be a person. I didn't know how to be a human. I had to go seek resources to learn how to fucking talk and conduct myself as a human being on the planet and be better and like be a blessing to somebody, not a fucking curse. And you know what? Some of us have a real disadvantage, Beatrice. Some of us come from really terrible shit, but like it's worth the effort to become a good person. And so that's why I look at Lala And I can see that in her. Yeah, totally. I can see that in her. But at the same time, I will judge you on your behavior. I will judge you on the fucking work product you're putting into the world. I will judge you on the shit that you say to people. Yep. Because that's how life works. That's how life works. Yep. Just, you're a beautiful woman, but you are an ugly person. And why? I'm wondering what happened in your childhood. I know. I'm wondering what could have happened to you to give you either this false entitlement to be able to speak to people this way or like the need to always defend so hard. Like why? Like who hurt you that you feel that you need to defend yourself and hurt other people like this? Like, Ooh, it's, it's above our pay grade here on reality TV cringe, Mm -hmm. but she's got issues. Oh yeah. Honey. I think her and Sheena probably, but I think Lala especially has such low self-worth. Like I was talking about it with my Bravo friend from last week who sent in her opinion Um, And she actually disagreed with me on this. So I'll hash it out with you. I think Lala has like no fucking self-worth. I think she thinks she's beautiful. Like she knows she's beautiful and she can use her looks to her advantage, aka fucking people like Randall Emmett so she can live her life and get everything paid for. But like in order to be with somebody like Randall Emmett, what I think is like, man, you must really not value yourself at all because you think that that's the only way to success or that's your ticket to making it in life. And it's like, girl, no, like I feel like you could be a really awesome, cool person and maybe you could design some cool sparkling water and make a lot of fucking money in the rich people circles and like have a beautiful, successful life. But like you have to want that in your life, not come after everybody else's success because you're fucking jealous of it. Like you can create that yourself, girl. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're some dud on the show that nobody cares about. You know what I mean? Like she has the power. Like you said, she's got the raw materials, but she just doesn't see it. So she's got to attack everybody Mm -hmm. else because God forbid somebody like Ariana, who she thinks maybe has no talent or something like, oh, fuck Ariana. Like, why are you getting all of the fame? Why are you getting all of the accolades? Um, Because she's a real person and she does have talent. Sorry that you're envious of that. Maybe get some yourself. I don't know. Yeah. And she's also shared parts of herself and parts of her process and parts of her healing with the audience. And she hasn't done it in a vindictive way 
or used it as a weapon because like the season where Lala's dad died, that was very sad. And like a lot of us can really relate to that. But at the same time, she's attacking everybody. She's getting Mm. fucking drunk. She's calling Raquel a Bambi eyed bitch. I mean, like it's hard to root for somebody who's so awful. Yeah. It's hard. I, I, I feel bad for her. Me too. But I, I have hope for her. I, I have hope that she can figure it out. Like at her age, I too was a big fucking mess, but I was starting to get my shit together. Yeah. And um, I believe that she can as well. But in this season <laughs> and in this reunion, I I really, I could not stand her. I couldn't take another fucking word out of her mouth. Like, please do stomp off the stage like a hypocrite and get off the TV because it's too much. Yep. It was kind of weird for me to like watch season 10 i mean i was a vpr novice i had never seen any seasons prior i watched season 10 i'm like damn this shit's lit i'm so excited and then watch season 11 and it's like such a downturn and it's all because of like the bravo producers like i don't Mm -hmm. know why we had to go for this sandoval redemption arc but when ariana made that miami comment i was like oh that makes sense they've been doing this this whole entire time they just ride for these shitty men and just keep producing the same crap over and over again what do you think of sandoval crying to ariana and apologizing i thought it was fake as fuck god so whereas lala is a wounded child inside of her body (laughs) tom sandoval strikes me as blank yeah and grasping and trying to figure out like who he is and putting on masks to approximate what real human emotion looks like. And I don't know if that's what we call a sociopath or a psychopath. I don't think he's full on that, but I like don't feel anything from him. Mm -hmm. I don't believe him. No, me neither. I mean, I think he could have spent this entire season very authentically stating that he was wrong and that he apologized and then demonstrating in a variety of ways that he was conscious to his, his, his errors Mm -hmm. and becoming a better person like he could have shown us some of that but what he chose to do instead was just put forth all of this falseness i know like it's super easy to read if like you have a heart in your body or any kind of intuition and empathy like women okay? yeah it's super easy for women to clock that yeah unless the women themselves are, are very damaged like sheena yeah like sheena if you're really damaged maybe it's harder to see that but yeah i, I don't it's performative so performative, performative empathy performative apology and he's just trying to regain his position in this group he's trying to stay on a show and ariana knows it oh totally and that's why she's getting emotional she's like i just don't want you in my life i want you away from me and like a bunch of people were making comments online with ariana's reaction to him crying like this was exactly the reason why she didn't want to be a part of it because she didn't want to be victimized by him again or like have him come by and manipulate her with his fake fucking robin brown tears and have her fall for it and think that you're a changed man like sheena it's like no you're not man you suck and i thought it was funny how sandoval was defending lala during this reunion too i'm like ah that makes a lot of fucking Mm -hmm. sense actually why lala's coming for you and trying to defend you with this stupid redemption arc and you're totally supporting her for that Mm -hmm. cringe yeah and i think that tom sandoval also supported and validated like her final comments of the season finale where she's calling out ariana who doesn't bring anything and that she thinks it's bullshit and that yeah. she's livid and like tom is so very happy that lala is saying that and i just think it's all very fucked up i think ariana's crying in this moment not because of tom but because of what she saw lala and sheena say because of what yep. she saw her girls say about her and again she hadn't watched any of the episodes she saw a lot of clips mm-hmm. and so she could definitely pick up the tenor of what was being said about her and she did address that on watch what happens live like weeks and weeks ago like she had seen some of the shit that sheena has said and it hurt her but like to see it up front and personal to see sheena like going over to lala and saying i totally agree with you i totally understand you after calling ariana beyonce like that must have hurt and that's why she was crying and Mm -hmm. also it's been a fucking lot and what i really don't like about lala is like how she has to insert herself into other people's processes like to hijack and co-opt ariana's process of healing and the way ariana needs to do that for herself in a way that works for her which is going to be different for everybody so it's going to be different than the way you did that lala this is the way ariana needs to do it but at every turn you're fucking inserting yourself into her process of healing and making Making it about you and then condemning her for the way that she's doing it when 
in actuality, like objectively, Ariana's being very mature. Yep. She's also being respectful of even Tom Sandoval by refusing to get down in the mud with him. Respectful of the group by doing that. Balala wouldn't know anything about that. Nope. About respect and such. She wouldn't. It was just crazy to see this all play out at the, the finale. Like I knew it was going to happen. I knew that this is where they were going, but I'm just like, wow, this is crazy. Do you think that they're going to have a season 12? I was listening to a clip from the Call Your Daddy podcast with Lisa Vanderpump and the host of Call Your Daddy said that she would suggest that Lisa Vanderpump fire everybody on VPR. Like we said, like a week ago, two weeks ago, clear the fucking decks, fire them all, send them off to their own little shows about parents and diapers and this or that. And then bring on a bunch of young kids who are not camera ready, who don't have social media presences, who don't know how to curate their appearance on fucking television throw them in the bar, throw them in there with alcohol, kind of like what they're doing on Southern Hospitality and start over. And Lisa said, like, you're not the first person to pitch that. And it sounded to me like that is in consideration. Oh. Like, I think they are deeply thinking about whether they want to bring back VPR because like, for what? Yeah, right. Truly for what? Nobody Why? wants this. Nobody this is wants this fake shit. Stupid. Yeah. Like we can have more water parties. Ugh. Or like birthday parties with randos in the Ugh. pool at Tom Sandoval's. Like that's not entertaining at all. No. Nope. Real people, gritty people who make mistakes, who don't know how to produce themselves on camera. Now that shit is interesting. And that's yep. what made Vanderpump Rules entertaining. Oh, for sure. Even in their like Secrets Revealed episode that they had after the reunion and the after show and stuff. Like, it's all just the same shit and like the secrets revealed was supposed to be like never before seen content and like hidden scenes from season 11 and it was all filler it was all yeah. stupid fucking shit i didn't even finish it because i'm like this is lame it, it is lame and i think ariana said on the disrespectful podcast with katie she said that they're lucky i actually walked out in the mm. season finale because that made that whole episode entertaining imagine yes. if i had sat and down had to talk to fucking tom sandoval and put up with his visine tears that would have been a boring end to a boring season that's yes. what she said and she's right it was a boring season it was very boring so even the secrets revealed are fucking boring <sighs> so lame now before we move on I, I don't know yeah if there's anything else you want to talk about but i definitely don't want to forget to talk about sheena mm. when she's asked whether she thinks tom sandoval showed up for her more or whether ariana showed up for her more she doesn't say what she actually said to yes. lala because lala said that sheena had told lala many many times that it was frustrating that ariana never showed up to her shit never fucking texted her back isn't actually a supportive friend but in the moment when sheena is asked directly she's like yeah no i think she's a good friend and this is when lala is like oh my god come on now you've told me a million times she starts to get really upset she even starts to cry and then sheena starts to backpedal well you didn't let me finish let me finish what i'm going to say and so then she says something a little more bold like well i mean yeah i mean there was distance and i hadn't been hearing from you and that was difficult but wow I thought that was ridiculous. And Ariana tried to give her the benefit of the doubt, too. She was like, no, I get it. Like, I do tend to isolate, especially if I'm going through a hard time and I've been busy. And so I'm sorry for the distance. Like, so I totally get it. I should have, you know, showed up a little bit. But I was going through a lot. And that's totally fucking valid. A hundred percent. But like, it also doesn't address like the elephant in the room, which is Sheena bitching all season mm -hmm. about how Ariana's a bad friend. It doesn't show up for her. And Sandoval was like such a good person for her for 15 years. And even Brock comes in again mm -hmm. to chime in and be like, yeah, Ariana, you don't get it. Like this is her friend for 15 years. And Ariana's like, I get it. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It just felt so fucking fake. And Sheena was annoying. She was annoying, but like she was caught like deer in headlights. Yeah. She was called out for talking shit about Ariana. And in that moment, Ariana clocked her, I think. And Sheena still couldn't stand on business and admit, yeah, like it's really frustrating. And yeah, I said some things, you know, behind the camera, but, you know, I'll admit them to you now. She just doesn't have the balls mm -mm. to do any of that. She looked, again, I say, just really weak and really bad. And I feel bad. For, I, I, I also feel bad for her because you do? a little bit. I do. I do because she looks really bad. Wow. Well. And I think she's so anxiously attached. You know, she's on 
the Twitters. Oh, or totally. On, actually, she's yeah, on yeah. IG. She's on fucking Reddit. Yeah. Reading how people are just ass fucking her. <laughs> They're ass fucking Lala and Sheena. And yeah. you know that hurts her deep to her core. And well, honestly, I don't really want anybody to have the mental strain of like feeling so persecuted by people like that has got to suck i feel bad for sheena but like the only way out is through which is yep. what ariana said like deal with your shit sheena yeah deal with your shit and learn how to show up in the world as a good friend and a solid person who has an opinion and stands by it like that's what you should work on yep and also don't be reading the comments mm-hmm. like i'm sorry but like you're on a tv show and i'm not justifying what people say online people are fucking cruel oh, people yeah. are disgusting yes i think it's really revolting how many people go in the comment section like nobody cares about your opinion anyway and you don't have to be mean and spread that shit online but as a creator as an influencer as somebody i'm on creating TV, life <laughs> i'm creating life as a creator like i don't fucking go and look at the negative shit people say about us or anything like that like i don't want to know any mm. of that because i know it'll hurt my fifis yeah but like sheena don't do that yourself like why are you chronically online mm-hmm. because you're obsessed and because you want people to be talking about how amazing you are and how you're such a talented music artist when nobody fucking cares like <laughs> they talked about apples on this too and i'm like why and and when you're like depending on the reflection back from other people to define who it is that you are it's always going to lead you astray yeah it's always going to lead you astray i mean sheena be yourself yeah be My yourself gosh. i mean like who the fuck are you how many seasons has it been 11 seasons i still don't know who you are um, she has ozd i like her better than lala because i think well, and she even talks about her intentions and that people know that her intentions are good. She just doesn't They're always not. behave in the way that's in alignment with that. I, I do think she, I do think her intentions are probably better, but I don't know. Who the fuck cares? I'm over it. I'm over season 11. Me too. VPR. Bye. Peace out. Let's get to the valley. Yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs>